Well, I bet you weren't expecting to see us again. I'm not even being paid to do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to review Avengers Endgame, the much anticipated conclusion to the Avengers saga. And yeah, I say review, but you'll see what happens. This is the follow-up to Avengers Infinity War, where Thanos more or less um, decimated half of the population of the universe, even though decimate, decimate means 10%, but who cares? Um, what? So basically, after Thanos decimated half of the population of the universe, our heroes are mourning over their fall, fallen comrades. You've seen from the trailers, or at least the first 20 minutes of the movie, because everything beyond that is complete spoiler territory. So we're just going to give our spoiler-free opinion starting off. What do you think? Um, 8 out of 10, too much Captain Marvel. <laughs> no, um, it felt like the perfect conclusion to the like, whole cinematic universe. Like, I'll still watch Guardians of the Galaxy and Spider-Man, because I just love them as well. Yeah. Stories, but, like, it was just really satisfying, and for a three-hour movie, or I didn't feel bored at all. I'm kind of on the same boat that, um, yeah, I mean, certainly it's a long running time, but I mean, so much stuff happens that there's, there's never really a dull moment, okay? Arguably, you could say some of the moments where they're grieving and... Uh, that's, that, that's need for build up. Though. Yeah, pretty much. Like, that's story building or world yeah, building or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like, in this case. like the humour on point for, like, it's the best Marvel humour I've seen in a film they've ever done. Yeah, for the most part. Certainly, I enjoyed a lot of the humor in it, but th there's a recurring theme I've seen in Marvel f films, especially the last couple, where the tonal shifts are very sudden, where they're trying to do a serious moment and all of, all of a sudden, oh, jokey joke. Yeah. Um, I mean, Guardians two when um Kurt Russell ego reveals that um he he killed uh, he he killed his mother, he yeah. killed his mother with the tumor and you know um. Star Lord is you, you know co completely furious and vengeful and sort of just going, back, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, or not even that like in that same scene he's like you killed my mother and then is a big joke when he transforms into David Hasselhoff and it's like this is meant to be a heavy scene and they were laughing because Kurt Russell has turned into David Hasselhoff but I, I digress um, you should hear his music it's the rapiest shit I've ever heard David Hasselhoff yeah it's a song called Get In My Car it's the dodgiest thing I've ever heard Jesus like, it's a good song but he, it's just so dodgy he was really rapy in that Adam Sandler film click he's probably just rapy yeah but um, tangent uh, but, but yeah the tangents are fun yeah. but all in all Avengers again, Endgame is a very satisfying conclusion to the Avengers saga but yes um, we have to deal with the passing of the torch um to Captain Marvel, the new leader of the Avengers, um, or sub-faction or whatever, but we'll get to that, because it's story time, and be warned, spoilers Lots ahead. Spoilers. Spo like, be fucking warned, spoilers ahead. Just not watch the rest of the video. Yeah, pretty much. Although, who hasn't seen it at this stage? Pretty much, yeah. It's like the it's the avatar of this year. Yeah. Except this will probably actually be remembered for more than a year. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's catching up. I mean, it's, it's the second, um, Top um, top, uh, top yeah. box office gross of all time. Titanic, Avatar. Oh, it it beat Titanic. Oh shit! Yeah, fuck. yeah. So it's it's number two. Um, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> anyway, story time. We open. Where do we open? Oh yeah, Hawkeye's family. That was a fucking heavy scene. Jesus, right? Yeah, I've never seen a film open with something not heavy. Yeah. That quickly, like. I know. Like, I knew it was coming, but holy shit. It, I mean, it went from wholesome to. Jesus. It's like, it's like he became Batman over the space yes. of a couple of years. Like, he gets so depressed and dark. I, if you've seen the end of Infinity War, of course. Hawkeye's family disintegrates, and we go into the opening titles. And then we cut to Stark and Nebula um, drifting through space from Titan trying to get home. And uh, They're playing a game together. Yeah, which is quite nice. I will say about Nebula, Karen Gillan really, like her performance in this, like I mean, she was fairly one note in the other films, but I felt she, she really... Because her character's grown since like Guardians 2, it was, like her character's evolved. Like, it's yeah. Like just not home. But, but she... I, I, yeah. knew, I didn't like her Doctor Who, but like... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like she's almost better. Like well, I didn't mind her in Doctor Who. Just, yeah. Just shit serious. But like, wow. <laughs> she has grown. She's grown as an actress a, a lot so, so much. Good. 
Nebula and Stark are drifting through space, going on their reserves of oxygen. Stark thinks he's about to die, and who should show up other than the Deus Ex Machina? Yeah. <laughs> the Deus Ex Machina, that is Captain Marvel, who has little to no personality to the point where I genuinely thought she was CG'd. Yeah, thank God there's not much of her in the film. Yeah. By the time she's on screen, she's a smug fuck, but uh, something happens later that puts her in a place, which I was very happy Oh, with. God. I forgot she was in the film. Yeah. Like, I actually forgot she was in the film. It's I know. Like, most of it. like, every time she showed up on screen, this big fanfare, I just rolled my eyes. She saves Nebula and Stark and carries the spaceship oh, down to Earth. <laughs> Captain Marvel brings the spaceship back to the Avengers facility. Stark is reunited with his old comrades, including Steve Rogers, Captain America, who he still has the feud with from Civil War. And they slowly but surely become friends again. They're um, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> people are still grieving, finding out the full extent of the, um, the wiping out of people across the planet. And then they, they recognize a similar energy signature from a distant planet that matches the Infinity Stones, and Captain Marvel is just like, fuck you guys, I'm going to save the world! And people are very rightly like, what the hell? I mean, like, you just arrived here, know your place. Yeah, it's like they actually treated her, like, it's like she acted like she was Brie Larson, she's yeah, like, yeah, yes. I'm better than I actually am, like, what, what the fuck are you doing? I know. No. <laughs> For some reason, they decide, okay, she's on board, and this is after Thor summons his axe Stormbreaker, and just decides to go, I like this one. Their shared press interviews say otherwise. <laughs> I, did, I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. Uh, and then... Tom, Tom Cruise, is that you? No, I'll be the first me, not the next Tom Cruise. Thank you Ooh. very much. Well, you know. uh, they go to Thanos' planet, they corner him. Um, Brie Larson, more or less single handedly, restrains him. The doctor shit out, beat the shit out of him, though. Yeah. I, I kind of feel it was nice, like, he was actually, like, on retirement, kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I know I shouldn't root for him, but like, yeah, uh, he. I mean, he, he's kind of relatable in Infinity War. That's the thing. Throughout the film, it actually showed that like nature is like getting better. The world is getting better because there's less people. Like whales swimming in rivers because rivers because it's cleaner and shit like that. I missed that. It's subtle, but it's like yeah, no, yeah. Like, the world is actually recovering from like the shit man does, which is like. That was actually a cool touch. Yeah. Like, it's not in your face, but it's like, so it's like, I mean, maybe he was actually doing something right. Maybe. Like, it's a terrible cost, but it's still a good thing. Yeah. But a terrible cost. You said, you said we wouldn't go political there, but. <laughs> like, no, because, like, it yeah. is kind of so, it is a factor in it, because it is, yeah. like, I don't know. But it does fuck up society yeah. as well. Like, I'm still skeptical over the fact that he used the Infinity Stones to destroy themselves. Like, it, it just seems so convoluted. Yeah, I don't know, because I, I think there was something... I don't know if there's something about, it, like... Where they're all, like, fragments of the universe. So destroying the fragments of the universe would, like... Destroy a universe yeah. at least. <laughs> like, yeah, con what did Benicio Del Toro say? They were concentrated ingots of the universe in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. But, so... Uh, yeah. Repercussions? I don't know. It's a, I, they're McGuffins anyway. It, it's, it's, it's a popcorn film. I mean, they, they're McGuffins. They, they literally tell you not to think too much about it, and we'll get into that because um, five years pass, and um, and you're just um, the Avengers have moved on, some willingly, some reluctantly. Um, Stark has a family now. He he married Pepper Potts, and he has a daughter, and uh, apparently, and and this. Nice like yeah. Um, and uh, Hawkeye is now a fucking murderous ninja and I really wish they'd commission a film showing his life through those five years See, I want to say that the Marvel never signed off on that but they did play well yeah although on your hand that was before all this crap yeah that was before so. the MCU but the ninja um, character Ronan in the comics, like not to be confused with the purple guy in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, oh, yeah. Or, oh yeah, blue guy. Thanos is purple. Anyway, um, yeah, Ronan or O N I N um, in the comics, a sort of ninja persona adopted by some of the characters. But he was fucking badass in uh, in Tokyo. Yeah, he kicks ass. Like, it's like how do I put it? It's like Blade meets Batman. Actually, no, Blade yeah. meets Green Arrow. He was kicking the kicking ass, like 
archery and swords and shit. Yeah. Like Hawkeye is the ninja. Um, Black Widow is really upset about this um, because her best friend has sort of lost his way. Um, well, she's got to deal with all the shit because she's like now the new. Basically, done. well, they don't officially say it, but she's like pretty much the new Nick Fury. Yeah. More. Um, yeah. Yeah. Dealing with like drug cartels, human trafficking, all the like. Yeah. All that shit. Looking after. Yeah, they they have the special team. Who's it? Rhodey, Rocket, um, and Brie Larson, um, who, um, yeah, after five five years in this universe, um. Of course, I mean she has she had no character to development to begin with. She so. cut her hair; it's an advancement of her character. Oh yeah, I apologize clearly, <laughs> but um, yeah. So this task force has been put into place, and now apparently Bruce Banner has managed to crack the code of how to maintain his his physical Hulk body and his rational there mental is, state. It is actually a comic thing where they maintain. They I, I did read up on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's actually a thing. But they make him so cheesy. <laughs> Like, it's like a giant nerd. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, how do I put it? I don't know. Like, he's really. I suppose it is the balance because Bruce Banner is actually a nice guy, but, like. Yeah. He's so unbelievably carefree because of it. I know. But I suppose his whole worry in a lot of life. Like, it's not shown as much in the good uh, Marvel Hulk films. We're not going to talk about the Edward Norton. Yeah. Um, but it was, like, always a fear for him to lose control and become Hulk. Ant Man, who had been stuck in the quantum realm from the end credit sequence of his previous solo film, sequel solo film, um, he comes back after a rat crawls on the control panel, releasing him. Ant Man gets reacquainted with the future five years on, um, like going around memorials, hoping that his family are still alive. Um, to him it's been an instant by the way he doesn't realise it's been yeah. all right. his only surviving family member is his daughter um, now a teenager who um, we, we never see again in the film yeah. but, um, she's yeah. here at the end <laughs> um, Ant-Man frantically goes up to the Avengers facility and pitches the idea which is completely original time travel <laughs> to be fair to the film I think they did probably handle time travel a lot better than other films I mean, to be a lot of films have completely fucked themselves with that stuff. Okay, I'll, I'll start out by saying this: it's not closed loop time travel, um, w because it's like Futurama corrects the paradox, kind of. Yeah, but it's not going to the physics. Yeah, oh, it, our heads will explode. Yeah, um, like I do computers, I don't do. Yeah, exactly. Ant Man pitched the idea to use a quantum tunnel. Um, to travel through time to pick up the Infinity Stones from prospective time periods, bring them back and undo the damage essentially. That is kind of the the middle part of the film. It's also an excuse for uh, Marvel to uh, reuse footage. It's pretty much. But uh, before they go, they have to pick up members of the crew. Maybe yes. Thor and... <laughs> Thor and Hawkeye and all of them really. Thor, Thor Hawkeye and Stark. And Stark, yeah. That yeah. Was. Um, Realising that it could be done. They go to Stark with the plan to do time travel. He's initially reluctant because I imagine he's just like, but I would lose my family and stuff like that. But um, saying, oh, it's near impossible. He managed to find... Um, he figured a, it out with 10 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> like he, he finds a sustainable framework in the next scene. And I'm yeah, just, so like not even 10 minutes later. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, it can be done. Yeah, yeah. like, thanks, Friday or female Irish Jarvis. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he's back on board now, so now it's time to get uh, Thor. <laughs> Holy shit. So uh, the Asgardians now have a little fishing village off in what I yeah. can assume is Wales or something. I can't remember where they say it. Was Norway. Right. Norway. Yeah. Why didn't I think that? <laughs> it's fitting. Um, and they're all like leading their own fishing village lives. Yeah. Just typical fishing village. Valkyrie is on the lookout. Hulk, Ant-Man and Rocket um, um, ask Valkyrie where is Thor? And um, Valkyrie is more or less hinting he spends much of his time indoors drinking. drinking. And so we go into this darkened room and we see, well, we see a close-up of Thor's face. And um, oh, he has the, his long hair is back, his beard is a bit scraggy. Zooms out, he is, Morbidly he obese. A lot of he, he's about 
50 or 100 so pounds he, heavier. He spent five years playing video games and drinking with Krog and. Uh, Korg. Korg, sorry. Yeah. And uh, they have the uh, little placement of uh, Fortnite. Yeah. Because you know they got to put that product price. Placement yeah, of there. course. So Korg is playing Fortnite and essentially being bullied by a 12 year old who. Uh, well, back in the old day, probably said they fucked your mother. But, uh, yeah. yeah, so Thor, Thor steps in and proceeds to threaten the kid. Very tamely. Yeah. Well, of course, it is 12A, but... It's very in detail, though. Yeah. Like, politely in detail. Yeah. But, uh... I don't know. Yeah. Anything to help you is good old pale cork. <laughs> hey, man. We got another spaceship. And um, as I was watching, um, well, obviously, pissing my pants laughing at, at Fat Thor, a plot hole occurred in my head because... New Asgard, the sort of refugee camp for the New Asgardians. At the beginning of Infinity War, when Thanos has invaded the refugee ship, I'm, I'm, I assume it's a refugee ship because at the end credits of Thor Ragnarok, we see yeah. Thanos's ship appear. Thanos and the Black Order completely destroy and kill all the occupants. So I'm just there thinking, um, looking at Endgame with New Asgard, that is, like, I mean, that doesn't make sense. It was never explained whether this was or wasn't a refugee ship. Uh, I think the whole play in there kind of hints it was, and then the fact that Thanos only really kills, like, half of everyone back then. I, I know, but so I mean... So half of them would be able to go on to Norway and just... Yeah, but the ship fucking explodes at the beginning of Infinity War. But, hmm. yeah. I need to rewatch that. <laughs> Did I just blow your mind? I can't, I can't remember, that's the problem. Yeah. It's been so long. But, um, I only saw Infinity War Holmes, like. Yeah. And Ragnarok, I'm probably going to watch that again. Yeah. At some stage. Yeah, I. I, I After looking at those things. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, Fat Thor is on the theme, uh, on, on the team, yeah. and Nerdy, Nerdy Hulk is recruited as well. So the team, um, they, they brainstorm and decide which period of time do they extract the Infinity Stones from. So, yeah. Um, so, w which basically means going back and reliving the events of and the- And reusing footage. Um, well, they, they- They do, though. They do reuse it, but they do sort of reimagine it in certain ways. But, um, so it means more, more or less going back and retconning the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, and... Uh, it's not really retconning, it's more taste of piss out. Well, not yeah, yeah. Um, also, full disclosure, Captain America, the Winter Soldier is still my favourite Marvel film. Um, I fucking love that film. Um, yeah, so... It's America's ass. <laughs> I'll stop. It's but, a recurring topic. Yeah. We'll get there. Um, so basically, they come to the conclusion that this, um, the Space Stone, the, um, the Time Stone and the Mind Stone were all in New York during the events of the Avengers in 2012. Um, the Reality Stone or the Eater was in 2013 in Asgard, Asgard um, during the events of Thor 2 and... Um, oh stop, it's my least favourite film. Um, and then... The Power Stone and the Soul Stone um, during the events of 2014 during Guardians of the Galaxy. So, yeah, you're right, they reuse footage and just make. Um, as I said, it's it's fun. different angles for some of them. Yeah. Fan service galore, here we come. So, yeah. The we'll start in Manhattan. Make it easy. Yeah. Go through each of the time travel sections yeah. bit by bit. So yeah. You, you want to start? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> okay, so. For this three mo three stones in Manhattan yeah. at the same time, so there's the Tesseract, the um, Eye of Agamotto, Eye of Agamotto and, and Lucky Scepter. Yeah, okay, so there's yeah. three all in one location at once. So yeah. Hulk goes off to find the Sorcerer Supreme and yeah. get the Eye of Agamotto, to which he ends up looking for Stephen Strange. This is before Doctor Strange, so he's not there. So he said he, Hulk's got to deal with Sorcerer Supreme, who. Mm. Hulk has an out of body experience, literally. Yeah. And chats to the source with Supreme for a lot of time off screen. But she explains that essentially that if the 
Infinity Stones are removed from a reality in our timeline, whatever, it'll fracture it off. Yeah, fracture the multiverse. The Mul multiverse, essentially. But if it's brought back quick enough, it'll be fine. So Hulk agrees to bring them back. Um, yeah. Yeah, it certainly was the easiest to change out of all of them. Yeah, in, out, chopper bit. Pretty much. Yeah. Bit of info, but like that's it. Yeah. Then, then we go on to... Uh, well, the tower, we the tower. yeah, the tower. Um, this is the Tesseract and the Scepter together. Mm. Um, it's literally after they apprehend Loki. Essentially, it's right. the cleanup crew coming in, Shield, um, well, Hydra sleeper agents, but they. Um, the you don't know that the, yet, because well, Winter Soldier hasn't happened. Yeah, well, the 2012 Avengers didn't know that, but mm. the, the folks coming back in time do. Capman and, and Stark look after um, the Tesseract and the Scepter. So. Yeah, um, nice bit of callback references. Um, like I, I did smile sometimes. Like the OG Hulk is also there. It, uh, up on the top of the thing, he's just take the stairs. Oh yes, uh, yes. That's where it is. Yeah. Um, so so basically, they see their past selves going down the elevator, and they force Hulk to take the stairs because he would destroy the elevator, and this pisses him off, which will lead up to an altercation later on in this scene. Um, so anyway, um, he's not happy about it. yeah. Well, he's a Hulk. When when is he ever? Happy? Well, apart from now, yeah. <laughs> well, new Hulk. Robert Redford reprises his role from the Winter Soldier, claiming the suitcase containing the um, the Tesseract. Well, again with the cleanup crew, while Loki has the fucking BDSM gag gag in his mouth. Um, it it honestly looks like that. But, um, 12 year olds aren't going to know that, oh, they probably will come completely. Yeah, yes, yeah, I'll stop. But yeah. The incognito mode is safe. Yeah. <laughs> so, so 2023, Cap and Ant Man uh, tried to cause a diversion um, by, well, Ant Man disconnects the arc reactor in 2012 Stark's chest. Um, but uh, they, they, th they think this causes enough of a diversion to take the suitcase but then um, call back to what we were mentioning earlier 2012 Hulk, pissed off Hulk fucking slams it across the Tesseract or slams Tony into the wall like modern Tony into the wall and he drops it yeah he's flying. well yeah I know that the Tesseract comes out of the case yeah. and um, 2012 Loki um, escapes um, which did his shackles come undone or something how did he no they said he just picked them up and got Oh. Well, hands. yeah, fair enough. So they fucked up, um, and then they never really addressed that time paradox. Yeah, yeah they, they, Loki um, in an alternate use universe causing mischief. Captain America has the task of getting Loki's scepter containing the um, the time stone, and it's a, it's a callback scene. What the elevator callback yeah, scene? Yeah, yeah. I love that. I was smiling so much because that is one of my favorite Marvel scenes, the elevator fight, um, where um, pretty much the same soldiers <laughs> as well. Yeah, are all in it. All, all of them. Well, with the addition of uh, what's his, what's the thing? Sitwell. Yeah. The, the guy gets thrown off a building. So they're all in the elevate uh, in the elevator, harking back to uh, the Winter, Winter Soldier, Soldier. and. I, I honestly thought they were going to recreate that fight scene, but he uses his future knowledge. We all know why we're here, and whispers in one of their ears, "Hail Hydra." It was obviously a cheeky reference to one of one of the newer comics, which caused huge uproar online. Where they find um in one of the um ending panels of the comic, it's revealed that Cap is a Hydra agent. I think it's during the whole Marvel Comics woke phase. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So this works for Cap. He gets the scepter, but then he has to fight his past self. And uh, his past self thinks he's Loki. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can understand that logic, but um, but still, um, it, it 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 was cool to watch the two Caps fight each other. Um, Most of them look really stupid to record it though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, well, stunt double. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, had, would have had to be, but um, it'd be funny they're fighting the air. <laughs> <laughs> Past Cap um, has his uh, modern self in a chokehold, um, and modern Cap ma manages to sort of convince him that he's genuine by saying, Bucky is alive, and then knocks him the fuck out. 
Well, at least a date him with the um, with the scepter. Knocks in the fuck out. Well, yeah, essentially, and takes a brief moment to admire admire his own ass. Yeah, that is America's ass. He has a lovely bottom. <laughs> of course, they, they all have, have lovely bottoms. bottoms. We need one fathered head reference per video. Come yeah. on. <laughs> we didn't get it last time. Yeah. So. Rest in peace, Pat Mulcher. Yeah. Oh. It's a tangent. Let's go. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> As we said earlier, they fucked up um, getting the Tesseract. So Cap and Stark decide to go even further back, um, despite the fact that. Um, yeah, I remember that. Um, they don't have um, enough pin particles for, an, um, for a journey back. So they go to the exact time where they know where both pin particles and the test rack would be at the exact same time, which is 19, 1970s in a military base. The same military base where a cop trained. Is it? Yeah. Um, it's a military bunkers, they all look the fucking same. Yeah. Cap and Stark um, go incognito again to track down the pin particles and the test rack. And uh, we have another cameo from Community, um, Yvette Nicole Brown, played Shirley in Community. Have you seen Community? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, who, Helen from Helen, Breaking Josh. Yeah, was... yeah. There are so many Community cameos in the Russo Brothers Marvel films because they were executive producers on Community. So, yeah, um, Ken Jong. Where's Charles Cambino for? Yes, I, yeah. Oh, I did this pause after so long, I just want to be scared. Yeah, I, I don't know, Disney fucked him over. Disney fucked everyone over. My childhood's dead now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ken Jong and Yvette Nicole Brown, or Doctor Ch- um, Mr. Chang and um, Shirley, or Helen from Drake and Josh, are in this film. Abed was a Shield agent in, uh, well, Shield security guard in the Winter Soldier. The Dean um, was um, the Dean of MIT in Civil War, and um, yeah, it's it's a running gag, I guess. But um, yeah, anyway, they're tracking down the pin particles and the Tesseract. Um, so Stark goes into this bunker and Dress is, the yeah, and tracks down the Tesseract, but not before he bu- he bumps into his father. It's kind of nice because like he knows it's his dad, but like obviously his dad doesn't know it's him because he wasn't born yet. Yeah, and essentially he just takes the Tesseract and just goes back to the surface with his dad and just has a chat about fatherhood life and fatherhood and like yeah. giving his dad his dad his advice about how to raise him based yeah. off how he was raised like basically saying that like he was a bit of a hard ass but looking back it wasn't he was yeah. actually a good dad kind of thing it, it was wholesome enough yeah wholesome kind of heart touching um yeah no because yeah. we've seen the Winter Soldier that he didn't really sorry not Winter Soldier Civil War yeah. doesn't really get on didn't really get on his dad and this kind of like brings it back where he's like he's grown as a character he's like yeah, he has a father's perspective now because mm-hmm. he is a dad and in, in a way he kind of has come to terms with the fact that you know Bucky did kill his dad and he has forgiven Cap and all this and um, yeah it's 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 it's, it's good character growth yeah like it's showing that he's learned like it's not really a show and that, it's a show and not tell things like He's proving that he's grown and he's like, he understands, he's like, oh, he has a kid, alright, fuck it, whatever. Like, he's like, no, he's learned from it. Yeah. Uh, which is a nice touch. <laughs> and then Cap, well, this is all happening. Yeah. He's off sneaking through to find pin particles and he just starts making up bullshit when he runs into pin. Yeah. <laughs> and he's saying that, like, oh, yeah, the fellas with your ship and dropped it. It's radioactive shit's blowing green yeah. or whatever. And you see the de aging technology used on Michael Douglas again, except he has a big feckin' seventies <laughs> mullet. I'm just like, oh for fuck's sake. I mean they they do good with the de aging. Yeah, he tricks um Hank Pym to get out of his office office. He nabs the pin particles and then he Helen finds out he starts looking around for him. Yeah. Thinking he's a dodgy. Yeah. He is dodgy. <laughs> he's a tender moment staring through the window at uh, uh, what's her name Peggy Carter yeah he stares at her through the window in a dark room yeah tender or creepy I don't know um, both well it's not creepy unless he starts putting his hand down his trousers <laughs> it's not stalking unless your hands are down yeah well this this scene will foreshadow what will happen in the final third of the movie but anyway they have completed their mission and they decide to go back to the present. So that's the New York Infinity Stones out of the way, and now the final three. 
So Colonel Rhodes and Nebula show up to the events of Guardians of the Galaxy to retrieve the Power Stone, while Hawkeye and Black Widow go off through space to go and get the Soul Stone. For some reason they know how to fly a spaceship. Um, I guess in this universe the controls of operating a I mean, jet and the YouTube spaceship still are the existed in 2014. What? They could YouTube in 2014, how to fly a spaceship. How to <laughs> okay. Uh, so they go back to Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and it's shot for shot remake of when Quill's walking into the like ancient temple just at a different angle. Yeah, with Come and Get Your Love by Redbone playing in the background. Yeah, um, as far as I remember they knock him out don't they? Yeah. yeah, they just knock him out and steal the power stone and then... As Rhodey and Nebula are planning to teleport back to the, um, the future, or the present in this movie, um, for some reason Nebula's circuitry stops her because the, well, paradox of The link, yeah. whatever. The, um, the neural link gets um, interfered by past Nebula <laughs> and Thanos is able to intercept that and um, abducts future Nebula. They nebula from the past yeah. and Nebula from the future or present, whatever we're calling it. It's like they're... 2014 things. Nebula and 2023 Nebula. Yeah, they're like... Their brains kind of like interfere or kind of like... Sink Quantumly it. entangled? Yeah, they like basically... The same way as Ant-Man? Yeah, basically... Stuff from her brain is like memories are being shown on past Nebula yeah. while she's being like interrogated or tortured by Thanos. It's pretty convoluted in my it's, opinion. It's a weird one. But, uh, it was showing how much Nebula grew as a character. Like I didn't really, like I realised it a bit but I didn't realise as much from Guardians 2 and I was just like yeah. oh fuck they're like dramatically different people. Yeah. The Karen Gillan certainly knocks yeah, it out of the car. Like, this is like playing the same person with two different mindsets, which yeah. is like pretty cool, and it showed like how much he'd grown. Certainly. But seeing them argue was a bit strange. <laughs> I don't know who to root for, I don't know. But it's also so interesting that um, Gamora, 2014 Gamora, is, um, well, obviously she's still alive in this timeline, and Future Nebula talks to Gamora, um, who is still somewhat affiliated with Thanos. As soon as Future Nebula, um, confesses I only wanted a sister, she instantly denoun denounces Thanos and you know realizes the sisterly bond is more important than this um you know this this big Titanic overlord. It's a bit gay. <laughs> I mean it was kinda of touching but um I dunno. You think there'd be more to talk on them though? Talking on the the bond. Like on that kinda of whole section. Yeah, I guess it, it was it was kind of a bit too sudden. I mean, eh, I don't know. We'll we'll just sort of yeah give it, it a pass. It was good, but like there's not much to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> Black Widow and Hawkeye travel to Vormir to um well the, it's ba it's basically a complete retelling of how Thanos. Um, got the Soul Stone in the previous film with the Red Skull, not played by Hugh Go Weaving, by the way. Which um, he's played differently. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's played by someone from The Walking Dead. Oh shit! I didn't even notice. Yeah, <laughs> no, he did a pretty good job. Oh. Was, um, <laughs> Red Skull essentially recycles the same shtick to Black Widow and Hawkeye that a soul needs to be sacrificed to get the Soul Stone and all this stuff and. Like, I mean, given that it's Black Widow and Hawkeye, like, these two are, you know, best friends and stuff. It's just, they're, they're like platonic life partners. It, it was kind of tough to see, but it, it's, esen it's essentially the Battle of the Lemmings. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember a time where two pe people tried to kill themselves quicker than Central Lake. <laughs> yeah, but, but at the same time, it's... Um, it was it was kind of tough to watch in a way, and um, it's kind of funny. Well, you know, in a way, it was. But them would just um, no, I want to die. No, I want to die. And no, we need an expert. They should have brought brought in an expert, Catherine Langford from Thirteen Reasons Why, who who reportedly had a role in this, but got deleted. Um, <laughs> I don't 
would have gone with Kurt Cobain, <laughs> No, she actually was meant to play the older version of um, Stark's daughter. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Hawkeye is grappling from the top of the cliff um, with a Black Widow grabbing his leg. So, you know, the odds of her dying are much more likely. Um, they sort of have a tearful farewell. She drops down. And she's dead, and the soul stone is released. She has a bit of, cro- of a cry, is that? Yeah, well, I mean, anyone would. Um, I didn't. Well, <laughs> they have the soul stone now, so that's something. Um, so that's five out of six. Now we go to the reality stone, which means um, going back to the events of Tor 2, um, <coughs> which is probably my least favourite Marvel film. Oh, fucking terrible. Yeah. Um, and we're reunited with Natalie Portman. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably the least remarkable character in the, actually you know what, no, the intern. Um the intern is probably the most annoying character in the MCU. I forgot she existed. Yeah. Honest. Rocket and Thor go back to Asgard in twenty thirteen to extract the reality stone out of uh, Natalie Portman or Jane Foster. And um Thor Thor is just a mess. It's funny though. He's like your like your drunken uncle that wants to hire you all the time. Yeah, I know, but I mean, he sees his mother again and realizes this is the day he uh, she died, and he and yeah, I mean, okay, granted, I would be in the same position if if I went back in time and if I knew that my mother would die on that same day, I would be a wreck. They didn't go overboard with his. Um, I, I don't know with, with how Tor was just kind of a, bit of a bit of a joke but um, funny Some yeah. people are funny so the plan is for Rocket to extract the um, the eater out of Jane Foster and um, Tor tries to avoid his mother but fails and tries catching up with her he has a bit of cry <laughs> yeah um, so he has his hammer from the past as well yeah and, and also the funny thing she knows that he has come from the future and says you know I was raised by witches you know and I'm just like okay this kind of came out of nowhere no it's North mythology it's, it's, oh well yeah, yeah. And it's okay but like yeah That's eh. <laughs> yeah it was just like there's being raised by witches and then it's like oh yeah I know you time travel I'm like yeah okay suppose the fact that you put on like what 50 pounds kind of gave it away but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah true true um big Lebowski um <laughs> Thor summons his hammer and uh, yeah, Rocket extracts the eater off screen. So Rocket successfully extracts the eater. Thor summons Mjolnir, brings it back to the past. Um, how this affects the course of history is completely unexplained, but they go back anyway. Alternate time. All six Infinity Stones are retrieved. They come back in one piece, but they soon realise Nat is gone. They have a bit of a cry, and um, and. Uh, decide to well construct their own version gauntlet, yeah. their own version of the infinity gauntlet which is made out of um iron man suits yeah basically iron man armor um which kind of made me wonder in a way peter dinklage got shafted like they they didn't bring him back yeah. to um to his oh, he was too busy making that a uh, pathetic season eight of game of thrones which is completely fucked and whoever says so differently is logistically and factually wrong it is hell. <laughs> they fucked it. We never get to see Peter Dinklage and his dwarven forge again and whatever accent he was putting on. The stones need to be confined in this gauntlet of like, what is this? Irish, English, Swedish, Norwegian? Handicap. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, Stark manages to construct a, a fully functioning infinity gauntlet they decide to get Hulk to use the Infinity Gauntlet because, oh, these Infinity Stones are mostly gamma radiation and I've absorbed gamma radiation before. It's like, okay, good expedition. We've never been told about gamma radiation in Infinity Stones before, but like, I mean, Hulk being formed from gamma radiation is common knowledge. It's just that um, the, Infi- the Infinity Stones wasn't really explained to be formed from gamma radiation, but we're, we're, getting, yeah, that was new. we're getting sidetracked. But, um, so Hulk um, endures the the unlimited power of the Infinity Stones, and um, he, well, he snaps his fingers, and uh, it just goes dead silent. Meanwhile, what we don't know is that there's an imposter in our midst. Where when Nebula was abducted um, 
they decided to steal her um her face plate or her, something? her face plate oh. and use it on past nebula to um masquerade as future nebula and uh and, and basically sabotage um sabotage their plan because Thanos now has seen the memories of future nebula and what becomes of him and has time travel somehow she hid the pin particle in her head that was it forgot yeah that. yeah um so but with the use of stolen pin particles past nebula manages to smuggle thanos's entire fleet not just one ship but then where do the other ships come from from the big ship Okay. Um, I assume I can't remember. Yeah. It's been four weeks since yeah, I know. The past Nebula succeeds in smuggling uh, Thanos' fleet through time just as um, just as Hulk snaps his fingers and supposedly brings everyone back from the dead. Um, or they don't know at the time. It's only when um, Hawkeye's phone rings and, he, and it, um, it's just... The, the ambient sounds are complete silent and this real sort of um, uh, ethereal music plays in the background. Um, the sound design was great, by the way. And then all of a sudden, missiles start firing down and completely destroys the Avengers compound. And um, I guess... Everyone survives. Exactly. I, I was just <laughs> going to bring that up. How the fuck did people survive that? Pretty sure he took it directly from a rocket. Who? Hawkeye? Yeah, it was like literally like five feet from him. Like Yeah. Like, the fuck do you survive that? Because plot convenience, um, but like, yeah. I get that there's supposed to be like superhuman or like shit like that. But no, he's just really good with a bow and a sword. He's not like yeah. He releases his foot soldiers into the fray, and they start running after everyone and trying to rob the Infinity Gauntlet along with past Nebula. Essentially, it devolves into cat and mouse between a fucked one of foot soldiers that climb all over the walls and the roofs and everything, and Hawkeye. Who sets traps while he's running? It's like a video game. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, really, what happens is um, Thanos, past Thanos, shows up with his army and faces against Thor, Stark, and Captain America. So Thanos sends Nebula into past Nebula into the compound, to look for the Infinity Gauntlet, while Hawkeye's being chased by all the foot soldiers, mm. and he ends up running into her, and then her future self, her future self finds and her and kills and the her more. and more. Beat the crap out of her and just kill her, and then join the team. I don't know. So Nebula kills her past self, which does it count as suicide? So yeah, Nebula kills herself, and the game of cat and mouse continues with the Infinity Gauntlet. Thanos faces off against Cap, Thor, and Iron Man, and this is this is something that really got to me. He has no Infinity Stones at this point, and you know, given that in Infinity War, um, he was sort of neck and neck with, with four six, with, yeah or not even just with all six with remember, five, on, on four, five yeah. yeah four um, this was before he got the time stone but um, yeah, to be fair he threw a moon at them you didn't do it this time <laughs> well yeah but but at the same time like they are struggling to you know fight back in this case and all he has is this big feckin' double baited sword it's um, dark maw powers maybe and, and then we realise cop is worthy yeah, Cap's able to summon Mjolnir, which is a nice little tip of the hat to Avengers: Age of Ultron, where he tries to pick up the uh, the hammer, and um, it moves slightly. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Thor has a sort of concerned look on his face. Yeah, but um, and he, and he's just there on the ground, like I knew it. So yeah, even though he is wordy, he still um, kind of struggles to fight off Thanos on his own after um, Stark and Thor have been beaten aside. Because having two magically powered weapons and um, outnumbering him and him not having infinity gauntlets clearly makes him even. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Russo's. It was a cool fight. <laughs> it was pretty good. It, it gets kind of cooler um, because there, um, just as Cap thinks he's he's being beaten, and he looks out at the sheer expanse of all the foot soldiers, um, Tom Von Lawler and the black, yeah, I know he's called Ebony Mom. I'm calling them Tom Von Lawler. I just call him Nage. Skinny Squidward. Nage. He just looks like Squidward. Yeah. Well, I mean that they referenced that, but 
Just as Cap realises he's beaten and he sees the sheer mass of the army, which, I mean, that wide shot of the army just looks like a proper matte painting. It was a lovely shot. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, this is right. White terror. terror. This is right. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm definitely being cut off YouTube. Um, um, but just as Cap thinks he's done for, he hears a familiar voice on your left. And now comes Falcon out of um, one of Doctor Strange's portals, along with um, everyone. The Wakandan army and everyone else. The Wakandan army, the Asgardian army, the Ravagers, um, uh, Korg's army. Um, but everyone has been revived by the snap, including Spider-Man, Black Panther, Scarlet Witch, um, the Wasp. Uh, everyone but Vision and Scarlet Witch. Sorry, Black Widow. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah and... Um, yeah, and all these armies we mentioned earlier, and it's pretty much returned to King. Yeah. 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 But, um, you know... Although, like, on a question, people that came back, say, like, people that were disintegrated while driving a car, do they just magically appear in the middle of, like, a motorway or something? May yeah. That could get very messy. I don't know. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Or, or, um, yeah. <laughs> I just picture two people having sex in the middle and one person disappears. And he just appears in the bedroom naked. Well, like, I don't know. Oh, God. You, you've just made me... Re you've just reminded me of this scene from Torchwood. With the have you seen Torchwood? Yeah. yeah with the sex gas. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Fucking hell. I missed that show. You, you brought it up. <laughs> Well, not Torchwood, they're fucking having sex, but... Anyway... I mean, imagine she got with someone else, you just wake up, like, you just reappear there while she's banging them, and you're just like, you're down naked, like, what the fuck's going on? Well, that's... Some... If it helps to come up with weirder Game of Thrones ones. That's one way of uh, going about premature ejaculation. So many... <laughs> we're, we're, we're losing our chance. I'm going to come up with weirder jokes if you keep going on. This, this, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> but um, so everyone has come back. Oh, Sinop, she disintegrates. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is that has been clipped. That has been. Used. Has, no, I've seen him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, everyone has come back. It's pretty much Return of the King, but with Marvel characters. Um, some of the characters quip with each other. It's, you know, a bit of banter. Um. Uh, Cap and Thor um, sort of fighting over which weapon they use. No, use that one. That's mine. Um, yeah, you get the small. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're they're doing their best to fight off Thanos. Um, they kind of get the upper hand. Thanos gets his men up on, on, on his ship. crucible of a ship to fire down onto the battlefield, um, which puts the others at a disadvantage. But then suddenly, the the turrets. The magic shields. Well, the tur the turrets fire elsewhere. They fire across the horizon. And people are like, oh, what's going on here? The Deus Ex Machina is back. Yeah. I forgot she was in the film. Yeah. She was fucking absent for two hours, but she's back. Um, she's literally the Deus Ex Machina. I theorised yeah, this before. She gets knocked the fuck out, thank God, but still. Oh, that was the funniest scene I was in the so movie. happy. That was the funniest scene the in the movie. The bitch gets knocked the fuck out. Like, she's overpowering Thanos, uh, trying to get the infinity... Like, with... with um, like he manages to get the Infinity Gauntlet um, at one point, um, but Brie Larson tries to overpower, her, and then he fucking takes the power the power the stone out of the glove and punches her with it. Knocks her the fuck out. And I almost wanted to cheer in the cinema. I pissed myself. <laughs> yeah, we're not misogynist, Clarissa. I'm not a misogynist. Okay. Um, I make jokes. That's it. Yeah. No, girlfriend slags me off about being a misogynist just because I don't like Brie Larson. She does it to wind me up. But she's got no personality or brain. Brie Larson. Or like, talent. Brie, Not your girlfriend. Yeah, Brie yeah. Larson. I'm like, like, dude, seriously. No, 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 geez, I haven't met her. How can I say these yeah, things? Well, I mean, I'm not <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see her eventually. But Brie Larson knocked the fuck out. Thank you. Thank you, Russo Brothers. I have to balance out the cringe. Balancing out the cringe? I mean... We'll, we'll, we'll sort of elaborate into the cringiest scene in the entire film now. 
Uh, this battle is just completely epic. Everybody is fighting tooth and nail against the enemy and people are battered and bruised and stuff like that. Some of the Avengers are, are fallen, as it were. But then Brie Larson decides to empower all the women in the Avengers. And what results is possibly one of the cringiest scenes in the MCU, it's hands so down. Forced. Like, I mean... Like, bear in mind, half these people just don't even know each other. Exactly. They just... Like, I mean, you have... Captain Marvel, um, Gamora, Nebula, Mantis, um, uh, fucking... What the fuck does Mantis even do? Exactly! Like, people are even making oh, fun I of this. Oh, I can read emotions. Yeah. I can make my... I'll make you feel sad. I'll make yeah, you feel you. sad. We know all your secrets. <laughs> and Pepper yeah. Potts. Um, okay, she's got an Iron Man suit, it's cool. That, yeah. That's different. That, 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 she actually uses the shit rolls we get to. That harks <laughs> back to the comics. Yeah, um, that's okay. That was cool. That yeah. was like, really cool. Um, but then, yeah, we have this fucking forced feminist scene, and I was just rolling my eyes, just head, head back, like, oh my god. And I'm, I'm just like. <laughs> like, there was a group of girls behind me, and I was like, what? fuck are they doing? <laughs> like they, they were literally sitting behind me like what are they fucking doing and I'm like say on <laughs> like, it's just so forced and everyone's just like what the fuck yeah like, I love how Brie Larson is like oh it's for women it's for women like these bitches yeah. hate her like they hate her the, the cast fucking hate her yeah no I've seen that like it's a fucking yeah. funny as shit like women hate her the cast hate her like it's it's get the fuck yeah exactly and she's leading the MCU now. Yeah, I'm not watching them anymore. I watch like Guardians and Spider Man, yeah. The rest I don't fucking care. Um we we have the feminist moment, um, which is pretty part and parcel of uh, mainstream movies these days. And Disney. Like, Disney are a fucking monopoly. Oh my god, they're so retarded. Yeah. Capitalising on your childhood. Woo-hoo. Yeah. I know adult, but still. But anyway, um yeah, the the feminist moment we endured that. Like it's one in the film. That's it. Fair enough. Like yeah, we gave them that. It was fucking cringy. It, it was overboard as hell, but you know. It was like ten seconds, so I don't really care. To yeah, that. um, but then I think the women get knocked out. So is that the half of them get knocked out? Yeah, um, mainly Brie Larson. Brie Larson. Yeah, she gets fucking yeeted across the battlefield and um, doesn't appear again till the end. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. More fighting. Um, trying desperately to stop. Thanos from um, you know assembling the Infinity Gauntlet, and um, you know it's constant back of back and forth. Someone robs one of the Infinity Stones. It's like a tug of war. So you keep getting back and forth. Back yeah, and like the power keeps generating back and forth. But um, then we suddenly think that Thanos is about to do it. Yeah, um, he's about to eradicate everyone out of existence. Yes, they're gone, though, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? That's another thing. Past Thanos compared to the other one. Past this version of Thanos is just like, you know what, fuck it, I just want to kill everyone. Thirsty. He He's less developed in this sense. But I personally feel there's an Infinity War. He was very fleshed out. Um, um, you know, given the fact, okay, he's, he's a psychopathic mass murderer, but um, he, um, he had a bit more depth to him, whereas... Um, and and I know he's you, not in this for half the film though. Isn't exactly, it? that that that's what I mean. Like, like I mean, it, it's you know, in in a film where you know, we're led to assume they're trying to do their best to take off Thanos. Oh, the their um, the version of Thanos in their current timeline has been decapitated um, in the first fucking twenty minutes of the film, and then and then it's just a a fucking the Avengers' greatest hits for the the second third of the movie. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I just felt Thanos was a bit, this version of Thanos at least was a bit meh. bit mad. Yeah. Oh, mad Titan. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But anyway, he manages to, um, well, he, he thinks he has acquired all of the Infinity Stones into his gauntlet, mm. and he goes, I am inevitable. Oh, shit. And with the good old, the old switcheroo, um, Tony Stark has stolen the Infinity Stones and has used them in his Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet. Inf- inf- no, it's just a normal suit. But yeah, it's okay. Na- suit. Nanotechnology, yeah. okay. It it is um, made the indents in the Why suit. Okay. Why the fuck did he even need to build them in the first place? 
Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, your hand, my hands are all. It's not just. The, the, the technology. You, it's been made clear that he's got for different copies of the same suit. Like, yeah. Just here. We don't yeah. need to build a new one. Here you go. And like half the remote control, just like yeah, it comes in. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> like why? In, <laughs> it, like fair enough, it's still cool. But like, yeah. In any case, eh, yeah. in any case, he responds to Thanos's, um "I am inevitable" with, and I. Um, Iron Man and he snaps his fingers um, Thanos' army fades away Thanos fades away and the battle's won yay um, but the uh, the effects of the Infinity Gauntlet have I don't want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> yeah the effects of the Infinity Gauntlet have taken a toll on Mr. Stark and um, everyone mourns over his loss the life slowly leaves his eyes and his um, his arc reactor power unit fades away and people are mourning over him and it's I didn't cry but you monster I was on the verge of tears but I'm I'm not that much of a sap it, me and half the cinema cried when Tommy Stark died and yeah yeah it was like bear in mind it's not the first Iron Man when I made my confirmation when I was 12 that's 11 years ago yeah it was pretty sad and then they have this um, this funeral scene where I um, cried again yeah Tony um, conveniently has this hologram of himself um, given his own eulogy <laughs> I mean it'd be kind of weird for him not to be so full of himself to give his own eulogy yeah, yeah. no one else is doing a good job of talking about how great he is yeah I mean it's made clear narcissist like, yeah Playboy millionaire and asses, it's like, come on. <laughs> yeah, uh, they have his funeral at, at his uh, remote wood cabin. There's this really long tracking shot of all the sort of major MCU figures. Um, and Brie Larson. And Brie Larson, and that kid from Iron Man 3 as a teenager. Oh yeah, fuck, forgot about him. Yeah. That was a nice touch. Yeah. And Pepper like pl puts out his like original arc reactor. Yeah, with the with engraving the, on yeah, it. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, that, that, that was sweet. That proof, was nice. proof to Tony's. Tony Stark has a heart and um, yeah um, so this long tracking shot goes through everyone and then at the very back is Brie Larson looking all dominant like you literally showed up at the last minute and then Nick Fury sits up and comes into shot and he looked sad yeah like a little bit sad or he could just be angry you never know that much yeah I don't know still mourning over the loss of his eye um, we will not talk about that one. That's the different film. <laughs> Come on. I know, but I I'm still not over it. Yeah, people are sort of having having emotional chats with each other. How they're going to move on? Um, Scarlet Witch is talking to Hawkeye about the loss of Nat, which because um, she's not coming back even with Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, the Guardians just fuck off. They 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 go with Thor. So the, this kind of leaves the question: Is Thor going to show up <coughs> in the next Guardians film? I hope that. And happens. then there's a little bit of a leadership kind of clash or argument with Quill and uh, and Thor. Thor the two Chris's um, and they're both they both claim to be in charge but it's just it's, I don't know like politely like no I'm in charge no yeah, I'm in charge but. basically and it, it, you know they haven't their monitors Gamora's still missing they're looking for past Gamora um, which yeah I don't get why she just magically ran off yeah like like Quill found her in the battle and um and um, thought this was the Gamora he grew to love. He got um, kicked in the nuts for it. Yeah, because like this woman is just like, wait, who the fuck is, is this, this guy? Yeah, like fair enough. Yeah. Um, like, so I don't know. Like, is that going to be the entire plot of Guardians Three? It is. Three? It is apparently. But okay. like, still, like you're in a different time zone. Um, yeah. Timeline. Sorry. Yeah. The only person you know is your sister. And you run away from mm. her and everyone she's not friends. I don't know. Yeah. Just, look, they'll probably explain it with her though. I don't Maybe know. she's just gone off continuing to be a mercenary, who knows. So, we can't. now there's the task of bringing back the Infinity Stones to their rightful places. So, the Captain America group decides to bring the Infinity Stones back to their rightful places and Cap volunteers. So, they, they use the machine and of course five seconds in the quantum realm means god knows how long in 
the, the quantum realm. Whatever, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. an infinitesimal amount of time. But, <coughs> um, so they expect him to be come back in five seconds, and then they realise, oh shit, where's Cap? And then uh, Falcon and Spooky realise this old man sitting at the edge of the lake, and it's old Cap. Um, he stayed back with Penny, is it? Peggy. Peggy. Peggy Carter. Peggy, whatever her fucking name is. Yeah. She's in one film, sorry, I like her. Yeah. <laughs> She's not. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it kind of the driving force for yeah. Captain America, really, and they got that one dance. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was sweet, all, yeah, um, it was, nonetheless. Yeah, it was nice to him. Cap um, passes on the, the, the torch, or the shield, the shield yeah. as it were. That's it. Yeah. Figure speech. Um, he passes on the shield to Falcon, to Falcon which... That was sweet. That, I mean, um, if he gets trained that fully, he'd be flying around just fucking a lot of people. I'd yeah. be deadly, like. But I, I, I have to. S- <laughs> I just think it's kind of funny. Bucky's probably watching. It's like, what the fuck, man? Like, best mates. Yeah. <laughs> We're friends for over six years. Yeah, like you've known this guy for what, like two, three years? Like, where's my shield? Um, I mean, he's got a fucking arm made out of the same material. <laughs> True. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's enough. Yeah. Until um, well, unless Rocket steals it. Nice <laughs> oh fucking Rocket! <laughs> <laughs> nice arm. Be a shame if something oh, would happen to us. I mean, raccoons trying to hit you know yourself. Yeah, and I played enough Slayer Raccoon as a kid. And that's, yeah. <laughs> that's where it's going. And yeah, that's where the film ends. That is essentially it. That is the end of the Infinity Saga. So that's the end of the contracts of. Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris um, Hemsworth. Oh, no, 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 no. Chris Hemsworth's still there. Uh, Ruffalo, I think. Robert um, Downey Jr. No, I said him. Oh, yeah, Downey Den- Den- Jr. and Evans definitely. Yeah, they're um, they're gone. Well, Den- I'm assuming it's on now. Maybe Scarlett Johansson. We'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, Robert Downey Jr. will probably go on to do um, more probably indie films stuff like that, and Chris Evans will continue to virtue signal on Twitter. Thank God you don't have Twitter because you would be punching the fucking screen. Yeah. I'm not. But we got Chris Hammer just being himself. Yeah. I love that one. <laughs> yeah, he's he's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So um, there's no end credit sequence at the end of this film. Yeah, we'd be, I'd be to be warned that by the fucking cinema staff. I wasn't. We were sitting there yeah. uh, for an extra fucking ten minutes. Um, but um, see, we only found out because we were in Tala, the cinema in Tala. And yeah. They didn't fucking clean it at all like people's food were just sitting there from the previous yeah family. like all over the place <laughs> and so my girlfriend went out with the complaint because it's like come on yeah it's not fair on anyone just leaving all the shit there and I'm like they came in and one of the fans like oh just by the way folks there's no end credit sequence I sat through it like a gobshite and realised there was nothing there so we all knew from that but like yeah yeah like we're not reviewing the credits we're reviewing the yeah we are <laughs> you get back so yeah final thoughts um <coughs> I prefer Infinity War to be quite honest. I'm the opposite. I mean, I honestly feel this. I mean, I mentioned this um, before that it is really just a rehash of other films. Isn't every film though? Mm. I mean, I enjoyed the film, sure. Um, it had a, a good few Easter egg moments and stuff like that. And um, obviously, you know, I don't know. Bri- Brie Larson wasn't too bad, but she was cringy as fuck. She was so lit, lover. Yeah. <laughs> and but but of course we need mainstream media news articles saying Brie Larson got so little time compared to her male co-stars. It's because no one likes her. Yeah. No one will ever like her. Well, and, and it's also funny to think that the Russos actually had two cuts of the film, one with uh, um. I, I think a significant amount of Brie Larson and one not. I mean, it's probably good they did a two cuts because yeah. Let's play. They put out that original one. We would be a lot less uh, mm. happy with the film. <laughs> the same but um, yeah, this is your new leader, Avengers. I'm not seeing. Good luck with that. I'm not watching them. Um, like I don't know. They did something was like a great ending to a, like more than a decade of yeah. like series of films. Like it was satisfying. Yeah, it was really satisfying. I'm yeah. happy with the way they ended it. Uh, I really like. I like this film, but more than any other films, personally. Yeah. Uh, first Avengers film, like I feel had 
perfect amount of comedy like the right kind of comedy not yeah. like awkward comedy it was perfectly paced yeah it was yeah. really well written as well yeah. and like it's how do I put it it kind of reminds me of Austin Powers but like some of the like time travel shit it's like don't <laughs> yeah. think about it just try and enjoy yeah. it like, yes that, that goes, goes for you that goes for you folks at home <laughs> yeah like without saying it but like it was kind of like a Futurama time travel theme where it was like oh yeah. like, correct it's on paradoxes don't worry yeah. Unless you put Infinity Stones back just to set up Cap going. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. I like, it was a good ending. And I don't think I'll watch any more MCU stuff because it's like, it's the great a great ending. It's finished. It's done. I don't yeah. need to see any more. I'll still watch Guardians and Spider Man because I love them in their own right. Yeah. Because, like, like, I can watch them self contained. So, like, I'll see those films. Doctor Strange, because I like Doctor Strange. But yeah. Like, like, I'll probably see those three films. Anthony I really don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm more or less in the same boat. Like, um, I mean they've released what they're uh, chur- churning out. Yeah, I I meant what I said. No, but, churning, what, churning but um, they've revealed what they're churning out for Phase Four, which most of them we've already covered. Shang Chi, which is the master of kung fu, one wow. of these exactly like I like it like it I said, just sounds like a spin off of Iron Fist, which exactly is so yeah. Um, I like have you seen Iron Fist? God. It's looked retarded from the beginning, so I just didn't watch it. Like it, like Finn Jones takes himself way too seriously. I think he's better off playing this cause a homosexual from Game of Thrones. <laughs> like the Eternals, um, which oh. I think the Eternals, I think that's is it, is that not the same race as Ego from Guardians of the Galaxy Two? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and um, that was the comic book and something to do with that. I can't remember. Mm. There's something to do with them. I can't remember. Well, I mean, not just, a comic book whiz kid I just know a good bit yeah. <laughs> I don't know everything <laughs> yeah me neither I don't only yeah. know bits and pieces but um, then the glorious Captain Marvel 2 will be coming out at some point <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm actually so surprised they managed to break one billion it's because Disney bought half the tickets yeah actually yeah because I'm pretty sure they set up a charity or a fucking fundraiser to set, get Disadvantaged children. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I covered this in my ranty um, Captain Marvel video. I, I quote I quote what I said in my last video because screw better housing, education, and a better standard of living. We need to see Brie Larson's film. I kind of find it funny that Conor McGregor is using char- his money to build houses rather than Brie Larson buying cinema tickets for people with disabilities. Like. Conor McGregor, oh, he's fair enough. He's built like four houses. He's probably gonna know everyone, but he's like he's yeah. building houses for people, like. He's doing some like as much as I hate the fella. Yeah, he's doing something. Oh, he's a cunt. Oh, he, he should be in fucking prison. Yeah, like no people play the villain. But like at least he's using that for. I know it's a publicity stunt. Yeah, but exactly. like it's something better than what Brie Larson's doing. I I don't know if that's actually gonna go ahead. And if it does, they'll probably dramatically change it. Oh, <laughs> Brie Lar- Marvel too. Like, Brie, Brie Larson too. Electric Boogaloo. No, we can't even put. It's always funny in a sentence or hurt. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. Like. No, <laughs> I mean we're, we're, the jury's still out about Danny DeVito becoming the next Wolverine. So that has to happen. Yeah. Like, oh my god, Jolly, Jolly, look at these claws, Jolly. <laughs> I don't know what else is coming out. Um, at some point they're meant to be um, converging the X Men into the MCU. They have to buy the rights back off. Of, oh no, they have it now. Fox have been yeah, bought have by Disney, now, yeah. as well as um, with the Fantastic Four. But See, uh, to be fair, Fantastic Four haven't had a good film. I know. I mean, and it's funny how two people from Fantastic Four films, uh, um, ironically as the same character, have gone on to be better characters in the MCU. Chris Evans yeah. as Captain America and Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger. They were both the Human Torch. I forgot there was a second re- the reboot. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. The the one recently that was absolute dog shit. That's why I forgot about it. That yeah, was terrible. But. That is essentially where we are at the MCU, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it for yeah. uh, for us for the most part. Great film, happy with it. Yeah, and um, that's about it. I will probably give Avengers Endgame four stars out of five. Okay, so we're doing four out of five. Uh, I'd give it four as well. Yeah. Four and a half. Okay. My, 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 if I was doing it in a town, I'd give it a nine, but like, okay. just translate it better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, not really much, I, could, I, can, I can't really fight it too much, to be honest. I mean, it, it did have a lot of fan service, but. Um, it's the type of film where it's a problem. Yeah, I mean, so. pres- like, I mean, obviously, 
many people will have already caught up with the stuff and it's just kind of, kind of a love letter to the fans and yeah it, like it's it's doing fan service in the right way it's not like oh yeah let's use fan service to bring yeah. people back like Star Wars episode 9 with Palpatine or fan service like remember this remember this you no, like this you really like this yeah yeah the Palpatine is back in episode 9 folks we're, like we're desperate Ron Kathy- Johnson's not doing it anymore come on Kat- yeah, they, uh, Benioff and Wise are doing the trilogy. You know, that's, really? that's a bad thing now. Fucking hell, that's a bad thing. I, I, that, that's why I'm doing the whole desperation thing. We need money. Kathy Kennedy needs money. Fuck, we're desperate. She doesn't even make their announcements anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's all Bob Iger now. She doesn't even do that. She's just there as a placeholder. She's just a figurehead. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned, will be a Star Wars one later in the year. Yeah. Oh, you will be dragged to it's Star Wars. It's the last Star Wars film I'm going to see. I'm not watching a Ryan Johnson trilogy. I'm not watching a De- Benny, uh, Benioff and Moyes trilogy. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, David Benioff. Guess what film he also wrote for? What, what film is what? X-Men Origins Wolverine. They were one, of, one of them wrote for He that. wrote for One of them wrote for that. That explains yeah. so much. Yeah. Holy shit, I never knew that. Yeah. It is now brought to <laughs> Uh, D.B. Weiss has now been dragged down with him I haven't seen with D.B. Weiss as well but like yeah oh. uh, book, like Marvel finished happy Star yeah. Wars I've no expect I've no hope for yeah I'm going to the last one because I have to finish the trilogy yeah and my friends will probably kill me mainly call him hi call him <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah after that I'm just it's like my childhood is finished let's just leave it aside we need to grow up like and I mean but like yeah we can close that chapter yeah. <laughs> move on like Harry Potter's finished as much as J.K. Rowling doesn't want it to be um, I didn't even see the last I um, neither do I uh, Avengers finished in my eyes I still watch some of the movies very picky about it still. Yeah, and same. then Star Wars watching the last one I fucking hate it already <laughs> yeah. see what happens I mean that trailer was so unremarkable I mean you, you sent me that trailer when I was uh, when I was in Paris and um, like my, myself and the girlfriend watched it we there was nothing no reaction it was just like okay yeah it's just the, oh here's that oh okay yeah like it's just I've no hope I'm sorry yeah no hope that's it okay well that was Avengers Endgame I've been Michael I've been David and t- um, tune in to another collaboration review at some point in the future Star Wars then yeah definitely Star Wars um, even if I have to drag him to see it I, um, I'm pretty sure you can't call the market the choice yeah but um, thanks for watching and until next time see you soon bye jazz hands, <laughs> jazz hands. <laughs>